Hi. Today's video, I'm going to look at a sample that we have uh, that demonstrates the use of IPython uh, within the Syncfusion Big Data environment. So as usual, uh, make sure your core Hadoop services are running. Uh, I don't need HBase, but I'm going to leave it running. Um, I'm just going to go back. I have an instance of Studio already launched, so I'm just going to go ahead and actually activate that. Um, I'm on the Spark tab, um, and uh, pay attention to the top left um, corner um, of the UI. There are three options here, Scala, Python, and IPython. And uh, we have already seen the Scala shell in another video, and I have Python uh, shell also. Um, those allow the use of Scala as the API and uh, Python um, API uh, with the shells. Um, IPython is a little different. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with it, you know what it is. Uh, for the rest of you, um, it's a notebook interface which allows you to mix code and um, also UI elements uh, such as rendering charts and, and so forth and have the whole thing saved kind of in an online notebook. So you can think of it as an environment where you can type some code uh, run it and then uh, see the results right there and then have a consistent way to save it and to share it with others. So we have support for IPython embedded within the Syncfusion Big Data environment. Um, and this is the UI that we expose here. Uh, this is running in an embedded version of a browser. Um, I'm just going to look at one sample, but you will observe here that we have a complete set of samples. Uh, so getting started, uh, the machine learning samples and several others. I'm just going to focus on a very simple sample um, that does a word count um, and then visualizes the results in an IPython notebook. So I'm just going to click on that to navigate to that sample. Um, and uh, just uh, one uh, quick note before we start. Um, on the upper right side, you will see um, the version of Python that we're using. We ship with Python 2.7. Um, so it says Python 2. And then uh, there's also a green um, indicator there that says, says that the kernel is idle. When you're starting it for the first time, um, it will say that the kernel is busy and initializing, so it will take a few seconds before it is ready and running. So please pay attention to that, because uh, if you run anything before that, it may not react. So I just want to make sure that you uh, kind of see that before you start working with it. And then um, if you look at the actual um, program that we have here, um, I have some uh, markdown text um, So at the top. So you can see that it's really just markdown. Um, I can edit it, explain things here, and so forth. It's very useful if you're uh, sharing it with someone. And then I have actual code, uh, Python code. Um, so I'm importing a bunch of libraries that I'm going to use here. I'm going to import uh, NumPy. I'm going to import uh, matplotlib um, and uh, also um, regular expressions, basically. And uh, once I do that, uh, the code here is uh, pretty similar to any other uh, um, MapReduce code that does the word count. Um, the only difference is that I have a list of stop words uh, that I will remove, I will exclude from the count. So I'm using our usual war and peace text, um, and I'm excluding all these stop words uh, from the count. Um, but otherwise, I'm doing a map, um, and you will see that I just have the filter here for the stop word. And then I'm doing a reduce by key uh, to group by key, and then um, do a reduce operation, which simply sums all the ones that we generated during the map. And then I'm going to take the top 25 word counts, basically, and, and uh, loop through and print them out first. So you can see that these are the top 25 word counts um, that, are, that appear in War and Peace. And then the cool thing is that I can take that now and then uh, plot it right within the environment, within the IPython environment. Um, I uh, imported pyplotlib, so I can actually go in um, um, and uh, use pyplot um, to uh, plot it, matplotlib um, and pyplot um, to uh, plot it, basically. So that's the code here. And uh, I'm just setting up the graph uh, and um, setting up the x-axis and the title and, and all of that. And then that's going to be the visualization. So uh, this is uh, the, the persisted notebook actually shows the state of the notebook as it was run last time. Um, but I can run it either a cell at a time or I can run the whole thing. I'm just going to do a run all um, to kind of have it uh, do the whole thing. So you will see that it's actually running uh, this part where it's doing the map. And then once that is done, it's going to run the third part, which is actually to do the visualization. Uh, once the map is done, uh, we will see the actual uh, count being traced out 
um, into the notebook basically. So this will take a few seconds. It's um, submitting to my local cluster and then running it. Um, the, the nice thing is that uh, this is in pretty interactive with Spark. If you are connected to a powerful enough cluster with lots of memory, you can get results right away. And um, you can play around with your data in a very interactive fashion. You can visualize it. Uh, we ship with a complete Python environment with a package manager that is integrated into the cluster manager environment. I will uh, visualize that in another video. But you can deploy your own packages. We uh, ship a pretty healthy complement of packages that are already included. Uh, all the common um, um, packages that you will use for data analysis are already included. So this is all part of the system. You don't have to do anything special to get started with it. So hopefully you found that useful. Um, as usual, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please let us know and um, through our support system, direct track uh, accessible through our website. Thank you again.